Our eyes are on the elections in Bayelsa State and Kogi State. The preparations there, what INEC is doing, what the security agencies are doing, the political parties' campaigns, and uh, all what the elector electorate want ahead of the election. So we keep tabs on what is happening. Let's give you an update of, of what happened earlier today, where the electoral umpire, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has held another stakeholders meeting today in Bayelsa State ahead of uh, the November 16th governorship election. The INEC chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubo and the Inspector General of Police, Mahmoud Mohammed Adamu, were both present where issues of logistics, conduct of election, and security were discussed with politicians and other relevant stakeholders in the election. Our conversation tonight is on what happened earlier today in the courtroom where a federal high court sitting in Abuja held that the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, was wrong to have disqualified the candidates of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, in the November 16th governorship election in Kogi State. Justice Falashade Ogumban Wogiwa, in our judgment, says INEC lacks the power to disqualify any candidate for an election as it is the exclusive preserve of a competent court of law. According to the judge, the provisions of sections 3.1, subsection 1, and section 83 of the Electoral Act, which holds that INEC cannot disqualify or reject candidates nominated by a political party for an election, is aimed at ensuring that it does not lie within the ex executive realms of INEC to determine who participates in an election. Justice Ogunban Joe Giwa accordingly granted release one to seven of the plaintiffs as she orders INEC to include the names of the governorship and deputy governorship candidate of the SDP as well as the party's logo on the ballot in the November 16 governorship election in Kogi State. The governorship candidate of the SDP, Ms. Natasha Poti, a running mate, Adam Skalid, and the SDP had approached the court to challenge their exclusion from the 2019 Kogi State governorship election by INEC. Let's now find out from INEC on this development and their action because it does mean a lot for INEC. If it says they've printed a lot of ballot papers or they've printed some materials, what does this mean when INEC is saying, add the name of Natasha Akwati and uh, Ronnie Mates and the SGP in this race? We have joining us via telephone from Yenagua, the Director of Publicity at INEC, Mr. Oluwali Osazuzi. Thank you so much, Mr. Osazuzi, for your time today. How does this uh, judgment come to INEC when the court says INEC does not have the power to disqualify any candidate? What is uh, uh, INEC doing about this judgment? Yeah, thank you very much for having me show on your program. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, what are we doing about the judgment? Every citizen who's been taken to court has to comply with whatever uh, the judgment says. And um, we have been consistent in our uh, approach to uh, court cases. We have complied with every order, whether we agree with it or we don't agree with it. In every democracy, there's separation of powers. And um, one of the essence of democracy is that there's division of, of powers and we have to comply with whatever the court says. It has the power to interpret all. But let me quickly point out that, look, there have been five cases dealing with these issues. Four of them have been in favor of inequality. Inec was right. Inec was uh, correct in what they did. And this is the first one going against. As of Monday, there was one by the YGT on all fours with this. And uh, four have gone one way. This has gone the other way. When we do get the judgment, because we don't have copies of the judgment, that we'll study the judgment and then know uh, what to do. But we will comply with all court decisions. This will be no exception. So uh, what is the implication for INEC? Or before we talk about the implication, uh, is INEC hoping to appeal this case? Well, we cannot talk of appeal unless and until the lawyer brings the judgment. We study it and it's legal advice and then we now know what to do. We don't foreclose the appeal. We don't fill out an appeal. And, uh, but if we look at it and see that there's no ground, no merit for it, then we will receive it. But I've told you, four judgments have gone the opposite way. So obviously, and they are courts of coordinate jurisdiction. Four high, uh, four judgments from the uh, federal high court, which is the same jurisdiction as the one of today. So that, that should give you an indication of what is likely to happen. What is the implication for INEC, Mr. Osazi Uzi, on this one? Because uh, we've heard on this program that INEC has had some 
uh, some material sprinter and uh, they are on the ground. And in another few days or so, uh, the non-sensitive materials will be effectively transported to the venues of this election. What does this mean for well, INEC? It doesn't mean anything. We, we have to ensure that um, we're dealing with 24 parties, sorry, 27 parties or 26 or something like that. We add whatever party that gets judgment before the election day. If any, any court says we should add any party, then we'll add the party. And um, when the voters go to the ballot paper, uh, ballot, ballot, uh, uh, polling units, they will see the ballot papers containing all parties that are uh, ruled to be uh, part of the election. That basically is it. There's no consideration of moving or shifting anything who will comply with the judgment uh, of the sector operation. Uh, take a cup of water, Mr. Osazi Uzi. Stay with us. Yes. Uh, we have Ms. Okay. Natasha Akboti, herself, jo who joins us from our Buja studio. Uh, congratulations, Emma, if that is in order, Ms. Akboti, uh, on your uh, uh, victory at the appeal court. I see that you're smiling, that you're yeah, perhaps going to be back on the ballot. Now, what does this mean for you? You perhaps will say you're vindicated. The last time, you were not smiling. You were obviously angry on TV. What does this mean for you? Uh, good evening, Shem, and thank you so much for having me once again. You've been of great support, at least giving me an avenue to air my grievances and um, soliciting support and prayers from well many Nigerians. This is a victory not just for myself, for Kogites, but for the entire Nigeria and the generation unborn because it has given hope to the common man once again that the judiciary is there to, for us. And at this crucial time whereby... Well, the common man again has sort of lost hope in the judiciary because of the turn of some events. I have been a victim myself with my senatorial election and um, the outcome of the tribunal and the court of appeal proceedings. But this uh, was, I think, I'm actually going to give credit and kudos to Justice Giwa herself. I understand she must have been under tremendous pressure, but she stood her ground and delivered justice for our case because, as it is said, INEC in its entirety is not empowered either by the Constitution or the Electoral Act to reject or disqualify any candidate over whatsoever reasons. And in such simple, clear terms that can be interpreted by any Nigerian on the street, it's actually amazing that the, um, the body of uh, the management of INEC will sit and interpret that to their own satisfaction for whatever reasons. But like I said, this means a whole lot. Um, it is a great victory. I like celebrating victories in little milestones because it's every little drop of water that makes an ocean. Every tree makes a forest. So this, to me and to co guides, means a whole lot. And um, yeah, we're going to take each day as a step, each day as it comes, but working like 18, 20, almost 24 hours to catch up on lost times. And I'm really hoping that INEC is going to well comply with the judgment and um, if they're going to appeal like Mr. Osazu said they're not foreclosing that aspect well whatever it is if they do appeal then I know that well there's some serious vendetta there but in the spirit of INEC since they are the regulatory body and they are solely responsible to ensuring that the Nigeria's democracy is sustained maintained in a sustainable manner then I think we should all work together and um, see how we could give the very best candidate in the forthcoming election a chance to win and to lead the people and the state for greater prosperity. I mean, what is your plan? Should INEC appeal this judgment? You have less than 15 days to that election. That means you have less than two weeks to the election. Should INEC approach the court uh, to see stop you? What are your alternative plans for this? Do you have any plan? Uh, it's actually nine days from today. And because I'm such a huge optimist, so even one day it's a glory. And um, if INEC decides to appeal, then we keep on going. And at the end of the day, we're going to have an election that will be turned around. Because it's my civic responsibility and right to contest. I have done no wrong. I have done no wrong. I have been witch-hunted and haunted for the greater part of last month, as a matter of fact, from the 23rd of September. And I have, been, I have not been allowed to campaign but on the flip side, on the good side, um, this negativity has turned out to be more of a blessing to me because they have sold me up from the comfort of my homes. Everyone on the street in Kogi State, in every nook and cranny, every community is talking about this victory. They feel as if I've just won the governorship. So um, I'm being very positive that, well, INEC is actually going to concede, accept this as um, a judgment which is binding on themselves, on them, and then we just move on. And, but of let, course, let, I would expect it. that INEC would yeah. consider 
an avenue of postponing the elections. You raised some very interesting anger to this issue. You did say that it was political, uh, the decision of Arnett to, uh, to uh, remove your name, but you also did say that it was an error from your party to have uh, fed a, 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 a running mate that is not up to age. This time around, have you corrected that? Who is your new running mate? Has Arnett accepted it? Of course. Yeah, let's say this. Uh, I still stand that my disqualification was a politically orchestrated conspiracy to favor um, Governor Yahaya Bello, who is the APC candidate. And, um, of course... So, so sorry, that, apologies. Said, uh, let's be um, clear so that we know where this is coming, I mean, going. Are you saying INEC is colluding with the governor and the APC candidate? Is that what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying that. It has been proven time and time in Nigeria, as we see today, that some of these institutions that are saddled with the responsibility of being neutral take sides with the power that be. I stand but, by my but, words. But can you prove it's it? It's very clear and it's a bit but, but evidential. This, this is a, it, I can prove the it. The allegations I, are heavy and weighty. Can you prove it? Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, I don't know if you've been um, on the social media the past three days. Uh, some good Samaritans recorded some transa transactions, some communications that took place at the point of um, when my party tried to submit my nomination forms. And two staff of INEC actually rejected the forms because they said they have orders from above. The videos are out there. Sahara reporters published the videos and it's actually available on my timeline. Natasha put it on my Facebook timeline where INEC officials said, so if they want to push that, as a matter of fact, I'm going to come after INEC with a lawsuit. Because uh, my rights have been trampled upon. And if we're talking about growing and strengthening democracy, then we must strengthen our institutions that protect, and, uh, protect the democracy. Me, me, so, Mr. INEC, uh, I'm standing Uzi, today. Can you, can well, you not, please not all uh, staff uh, of Just a moment. Let's, because that allegation you just raised is very weighty. When you say the umpire is colluding with uh, a major candidate in the race, those are weighty allegations there. Me, me, Mr. Osazi Uzi, would you like to react to what Mr. Akoti has said? This is weighty on the integrity of the electoral umpire. Well, you do know that there is no microphone connected to, uh, to my phone from the Abuja today, so I did not hear her. I can only hear what you said. So okay, so let me, let, me, let, me, let, me put it, let me put the question uh, on what she said. Apologies for that. Uh, Mr. Akoti has just said that INEC colluded or is colluding with... Um, the main candidates uh, in the race, a major candidate that is, uh, the governor of uh, uh, Kogi State and the APC candidate, and there are videos, uh, according to her, to prove this, and she is saying that it is politically orchestrated, the decision of INEC to drop her from the race ab initio. Well, uh, let me uh, sound of uh, note of uh, caution. Um, a lot of libel are still very much alive in this country today. And um, anybody who publishes libel statements and also who offers their platform for libel allegations is equally guilty of uh, libel. That's the discussion I want to make. Now, it is such that 87 out of um, 101 candidates who sent uh, in for candidate of Bayata and Kogi got things right. Now, was it in the collusion that led to your fielding an unqualified person? The court did not say the person was qualified. The court never said so for what little you know, of the judgment. You fielded an unqualified person, and there are serious representations about this. Because, look, a person is underage. He's a, not a Nigerian citizen. If it doesn't mean the qualification, it's a question of qualification, not disqualification, qualification. The, court, the high court has pronounced, but four out of five high courts have said so. The party apologized. The SDP apologized for fielding and on the for not meeting the constitutional requirements. Basically, what I understand the court to be saying is that yes, they may not have met it, but it's not for INEC to say. It is for the court to say. So, and I think the court wasn't here to say, look, INEC could have taken the SDP to court. That's not a line of action we intend to, to take, but we'll look at what we can do taking the law further. But it's a very serious thing to say, of course. Please produce evidence of such collusion. Who colluded? She has been posting videos on her platforms to show that they said, look, oh, we cannot accept it because your running mate is a joint ticket and your running mate is underage. If your running mate is Chinese or Indian or not a Nigerian citizen, he, he or she is not qualified to participate. And our belief was that if you run your evidence and your admission, they, they have to be admitted that they fielded an unqualified person. 
Why do you not say that we've not said, look, this is our understanding of the law, this is what we do? But they say, oh, no, you are an slave body, you have no right to say so, it's the court that can say so. That's the purpose of that import of that judgment. And you say that is based on collision. If there is right. evidence, it's very easy. Not talk about it, show the evidence. Okay, let, let's spend the, the rest of the minutes that we have on the program. We're out of time. But let me allow you, Mr. Porti, because you are, uh, time is against you right now. Uh, what, uh, the, the, what confidence do you have with the remaining time that you have, about 10 days or so, to the end of this race? And what gives you the confidence that you come top uh, in the governorship race? First, uh, Sean, let me just say this. Let me say this. Um, Yes, indeed, we've put forth a 34-year-old, but we had the right to substitute. And INEC, as a regulatory body, they have got no impunitive powers, so they had no right to punish and to choose when, at what time, to, to reject a, a, a candidate or a, a political party's nomination. We had a window of substitution, and we put forth a letter to withdraw the 34-year-old and substitute him with a 48-year-old with a engineer, and we were denied that right. So that's how we got into this. And at the last election, we actually had over 120 underage Nigerians who were on the ballot for the position of presidency, governors, and deputy governors. And may I say this also, it will interest you to know that in their bid to disqualify Natasha and carry along some scapegoats, they made a mistake. The all, blend, all people's blending party candidates in Kogi State, both of them, governor and deputy governor, are up, uh, above the age of 35. They're 37 years old and they were disqualified. The case is in court right now. So let's, I would like INEC to actually um, admit to the fact that they made a mistake because probably some of them, they are incompetent or they had some interests they were trying to protect. And in the course of that, they committed some error. The all people blending party is in court right now because their, their governor, and the deputy governor are both over the age of 35, the 37 years All old, right. and they were disqualified alongside me for whatever reason. Incompetence of administrative procedures, I must say, I... or a hurry to um, disenfranchise me and my party. But I'll say this, even though we have nine days, I am very hopeful that um, with the storm we have, I'm, I'm like a movement because I'm a new face of hope and democracy for the people of Kogi State. As you might see that uh, uh, my measures into... Uh, into the political space was born out of a dear desire to have a right. steel company we're, working and we're out of time actually into the space of industrialization yes and the good thing is the the reward of the advocacy we saw that um, a few weeks ago where president Buhari, Buhari, president we're Putin out of time agreement, and uh, we have 1.45 billion so yeah. that's all we're doing and believe me it's been we've gone out like wildfire and but I'm hoping that INEC is going to push forward. I wish push you the very best the in the so coming days, uh, Ms. Akwati. Uh, not, not, uh, not, not a very easy time, indeed, because the elections are very close. Uh, thank you so much for coming on tonight, uh, Ms. Akwati, uh, the you. SDP governorship candidate. We hope to probably have you uh, at some point before the end of the race. Uh, also, Mr. Oluwale Osazu Uzi, the Director of Publicity and Rotary Education at INEC. Thank you so much for your thoughts tonight. Well, that's our show, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm Shawakimale. Bye-bye.